welcome to track number 10 of Life in the Church. The cross. Point number two. That is all that is just one point. The cross of Jesus Christ will make you fruitful. The cross of Jesus Christ will make you fruitful. Amen. Without the cross, you will not be fruitful. Turn to John chapter 12, verse 23. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. If any man love his life, he shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Amen. You've not yet reached there and i finished reading. Let's read verse 24. John chapter 12, verse 24. Huh? What does it say? I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. Jesus said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy name through thy servant. Huh? The hour has come. The hour is coming on you. And when that hour comes, God will call on you for a sacrifice. God is looking for a sacrifice. He's not looking for some lambs and some goats and some cows and some blood. The blood has been shed already. But he wants a sacrifice of your life. He wants a sacrifice of your time. He wants a sacrifice of your money. He wants a sacrifice of your voice and your intelligence. He wants you. He wants you. That's why He wants to involve you in prayer. In a special way. And we're going to cry to the Lord. And we're going to say, Lord, if you can use anything. Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord. If you can use anything. Please use me. Please include me. Lord, don't leave me out. Lord, don't leave me out. Lord, don't just call Benny Hinn. Don't just call Radat Bonke. Don't just call Americans. Lord, please use me. Lord, can you use me? Lord, can you use somebody like me? Lord, can you use somebody like me? Please use me, Lord. Lord, use me. Lord, I want you to choose me. Lord, I want you to select me. Lord, I want to be one of those that you use. Lord, please choose me. If you, please, can you like me, Lord? Lord, can you please take me? Lord, can you please include me? Lord, can you please take me out? Lord, can you please select me? Please use me. I want to do something for you. I want to sacrifice my life for you. The hour has come. The hour has come where God is going to call upon you for your time. He's going to call on you for your life. He's going to call for your intelligence. He's going to call on you for your money. This is the hour. This is not the hour of, Lord, bless me. Bless me, church. But this is the hour of here I am, Lord. Send me. One day I went to a, a Chinese restaurant with some of my pastors. And there were, were some of us and we were sitting on the table. Then suddenly I, I, I saw them, the uh, waiters were bringing the food to the table. Then suddenly I heard a loud voice. Father, the hour is come. You know, when the food came to the uh, table, then I heard a loud voice. Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy name through thy servant. When my pastor saw the food, he started to shout, The hour is come. Glorify thy name now to thy servant. <laughs> and I said, My brother, you have used the prayer in the wrong way. <laughs> the hour is coming for us to live for God. And people will wonder, but you don't you sleep? 
Don't you like yourself? So what do you do? So you, it's, it's church, eh? Everything is church, you see. <laughs> so, so what is your social life? My social life is church. What is your social life? My social life is church. My social life is church. My children enjoy going to church more than any other place. It is the only place that I don't have to, we don't have to stand. Go and bath. Have you bath? Have you go and brush your teeth? Have you brushed your teeth? Okay, go and go on, put on your trousers. Have you, go and put on your shoes. It is the only thing that I come out of my room charging out Sunday morning. They are ready. Nobody woke them at 5 a.m. They are ready. That is the only place. School, I have to, yeah, go and brush your teeth. Have you brushed your teeth? Go and put on your shorts. Have you put on, go and put about 20 different instructions. But for church, they are ready. That is going. And then they are ready. They follow me. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. They are following me to church. It is the place they love to go. Amen. Amen. And my children, they are I'm enjoying this um, uh, musical night in the this, you know, parties. Really? Watch your child carefully. And their friends. The environment is training your children for you. 80% of your child's training, don't forget, 80% of your child's training comes from the environment, not from you. Not from the parent. My father never brought me up to be a pastor. My mother never taught me about Christ. Ever. Ever. Yeah. The environment, the school they sent me is what taught, that's where I found Christ. So, the school is very power, more powerful than what your father says and your mother says in the house. Careful now. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people are surprised when their children are monsters. So you are surprised that your child is a monster. It's because you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't even bring your child to church. You don't even think it's... Or even help to make their children's church better. Once I had some church members, they come to church and then they didn't like their children's church. So after church, they go home and they have their own children's church because the church's children's church is not good. So when they get home, they have their own children's church. Instead of making the church's children's church better, you rather come and... I don't, I don't hear me. What are, you, what are you teaching the children now? Son? You are teaching what? Noah's Ark. But for 17 weeks, you have been teaching about Noah's Ark and we are not seeing any improvement. <laughs> Now, when the seed falls into the ground, it dies and then it comes out. What happens in the ground? Darkness. Somebody, darkness. And then rotting where you break and you disintegrate what you thought you are. You become not nice again. And you change. You change so much in the darkness. Alone. Sacrifice. Change is coming. I said change is coming in the darkness. That little room alone. Change comes. When you cry before the Lord, change comes. As you stay before God on your own. I have times of prayer with the Lord. I weep before the Lord. I weep before the Lord. I weep before the Lord. There are times that I have prayed and I know the Spirit of God comes into the room. And there are hours I spend before the Lord pray, 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 pray. There are times that sometimes I immediately know that somebody has come into the room and pray. The presence of the Lord is there. Spend time and on and on and on. The time is going. The day comes. The night sets. And I'm still there waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Hallelujah. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. And some of you, ah, I gotta go, I've got to make a phone call. <laughs> You can't even turn off your mobile phone. You can't even turn off your phone. Great, 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 great. Who is that? 
Uh, okay, bye. Then you stop me. Then the phone will ring. The phone is ringing. Hello? Hello? Who is that? It's a wrong number. Okay, bye bye. Hello, I, I'm looking for so and so. Have you seen her? No, I haven't seen her. Bye bye. Ah. Then you pray. Oh, hello. Who is that? What? Who? No, sorry. Bye bye. What is that? What is wrong with you? Turn off your phone and wait on the Lord, you and God, for a few minutes. Ah, bah. You and God, for you can't, you can't have one hour without phone. You can't have one hour. Me, if you try to ring me, it's very difficult to get me. Very difficult. You try. You have to be led by God to get me on the phone. God himself has to direct you. <laughs> because if I'm to keep my phone on, I can't live. Every moment. Hello? Who? No. Sorry. Bye-bye. Hello? What? You want to speak to who? No. Wrong number. Oh, man. Please. I cannot. I cannot. So I have my phone off all the time. Then at a point, I just put it on. One hour. Anybody who is led by God to call me at that one hour will break through. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? It's time for you to pray. It's time for you to disintegrate alone in the room. Some of you can't pray unless it's a prayer meeting. You see, when there are people around and then we are praying, it makes me to feel that I'm encouragement. (laughs) The seed falls into the ground and dies alone. You don't die with somebody. Alone. Alone. You see, that's what it means to die before the Lord. Alone. Alone. God corrects you. God speaks to you. God ministers to you and you are praying and praying and praying and praying. Pastor, I can't get up early at all. Really? But when it's winter time and it's time to go to do your work as a cleaner or as a bus driver or as a whatever, you see them getting up, cray, cray, they get up. Ah, I can't believe, but you get up and you go. It's one of the most painful things to get up at winter, winter time. How many have experienced what I'm talking? The darkness. It's seven o'clock, but it's dark. Six o'clock, but it's like midnight. Have you experienced that before since you were born? And you get up for money. Money has power on you. Money has so much power over you. Does God not have any power over you to make you pray and intercede? Except the seed fall into the ground. It abides alone. People who pray and fall into the ground and die, they bear fruit. I have never seen a pastor who does well who doesn't pray. I have never seen one before. I have never seen a pastor who does well who doesn't pray. Always they pray. Always they have a personal relationship with God. Always there's a long time. And they cut off people. I have to cut off my wife. Otherwise I can't pray. I have to cut off people. I have to cut off my office. I have to cut off everyone. I have to cut off my children. Otherwise I will not be able to stay. And when you stay and you die daily, daily. What did Paul say? I die daily. How did he die daily? He didn't resurrect daily. He died daily by praying daily, in, alone, in the dark. There must be prayer. It will change your life. You will be a different person. You see, if you want your preaching to have power, you must learn to be in the underground and disintegrate there. The power, you see, I preach and people change their lives. Oh yeah. I can preach and people will 
change the course of their lives. <laughs> it's powerful. I can preach and preach and send people far. They will go. And you, when you preach to people, they just say, I, 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 I see what you are saying, but I don't agree with you. Bye. And then they go. <laughs> Every time they don't agree with you, I see what you are saying, but I don't agree with you. Don't bring up religion again. Nobody gets changed. Nobody gets saved because you have not gone to die. You bear fruit when you die. When the seed falls into the ground and dies, you see the fruits. You see the lighthouse churches. They are mentioning now, no chattel. Here, here, Lucerne, this, that, that. All over. There are churches everywhere. Churches in Accra, in Ghana alone. We have about a hundred churches. I don't, sometimes I see the person. The person introduces me, say, I am so and so. I say, who are you? Say, I am pastoring the church, lighthouse church at this place. I used to say it as a joke. That a day will come when I will not know who the pastors are. Now I meet and they introduce me and say, I am the one who is pastoring a church at this place. And I say, where is that place? Even I don't know that place. I've not heard of the place. And then I don't know the person too. Because there are so many. Huh? Are you there? Yeah. All our pastors are more than all the people in this room. And elders preaching. Teaching, preaching, teaching. Fruit comes from that. One of my characteristics of my life is I pray a lot. Let me just be frank with you. Uh, sometimes you don't, you don't say this because the Bible says you pray, go into your closet and quietly and don't say, I pray a lot. I don't have an office. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have any paper. I don't have any papers or clips. Paper clips or file. Is it that file? In and out. I don't have any. In out. I don't have it. I don't have a computer. I don't use computers. I'm too old. No, I'm joking. But I don't use computers. I don't send emails. I don't have it. I don't have anything. Me, I am a shepherd. I'm not a, a banker. I'm not a secretary. I'm not. I am a shepherd. I'm a pastor. My work is. My working hours is not nine to five. Oh, yeah, yeah. I pray. I pray. I pray. That's why you try to get me. You won't get me. Unless you are particularly led. Most of all the time, what? Pray. Worshipping God. Pray. 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 I prefer praying now to preaching. On Tuesday, I was in London. I didn't go to church. I was just praying. Throughout the service, I was just praying to God. From the afternoon, I've been praying, Oh God, Oh God, Oh God. Throughout, as they were preaching and they were doing their service and they were having Tuesday service, all of us was praying and praying and praying and praying. Oh yeah. I was in London on Friday and Saturday. I was there, I preached up to Thursday. Friday and Saturday, I didn't go anywhere. I was just praying, 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 praying. The whole of Friday, whole of Friday night, whole of Saturday, whole of Saturday night, Sunday. And I went out. Praying, praying. That's my life. That's my life. I mean, you may not know. You may want, what, what does he do? <laughs> I have the papers and I'm, <laughs> I don't have any paper. You can ask the people. I don't have, do have, have you seen me with any paper? I don't have any letters. I don't have anything. I'm just a shepherd. I have people who do all those kind of things. You want to bear fruit? Come join us underground where the seeds die. I said you want to bear fruit? Come join us underground in the dark. When the seed goes into the ground, there's no light there. Darkness. And it's all alone. You don't pray. All your prayers. Lord, I'm going out this evening and Lord, touch our family and Lord, we thank thee for everything that you have done. Amen, Lord. Then you are going. <laughs> Even when it's time to pray, you are ashamed. Who is looking? <laughs> Take you, Jesus. Amen. Then you just eat fast. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed, blessed. Amen. What is blessed? What is wrong with you? What kind of prayer is that? Blessed bless. Blessed bless. Blessed bless. 
When you are in the restaurant, these unbelievers, you know, you have two men kissing each other. And, oh, Johnny, Johnny, I, I, I love you. And then Johnny will say, Oh, uh, 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 Timothy, Timothy, oh, you're so looking so sweet today. And say, ah, Timothy, oh. And you, you are sitting at the table and it's time to pray. And you are ashamed to say, Father, we thank you for today. For what we are about to receive, we thank thee, O Lord. In the word of God, there is power. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Amen. You are blessed. You can eat your food now. Homosexuals are not ashamed. Are you ashamed? If I ask you, are you ashamed? Say, we are not ashamed. Are you ashamed? 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 Stand up for Jesus. Stand up and be counted. Let the people add you to the fanatics. Let them add you to the religious people. Let them add you to the Christian. Let them count you as one of those who stand up for the name of Christ. People are not ashamed of all the evil things they are doing. And you are ashamed. Pray when it's time to pray. Speak the word of God when it's time to speak the word of God. Be bold. It's time to come out of hiding. It's time to speak in tongues. These signs shall follow you. You guys must begin to speak in tongues on the road. When you come out of the gar, of the banhof, when you come out walking, just hold your Bible. And some of you are ashamed to hold your Bible. I don't want anybody to see that I'm holding my, this in my, my Bible. So I've got a small one that is in my Bible. Up here, this in cute portable, uh, this in Bibles. Portable Bibles. When you come out of the banhof, come out. Say, Makata soba shiba leba kama zonde leba kabaralaba. Meta Satano Bataya Makabalanda. Ah, can I sit here? Is there anybody here? Thank you. Ma Sultan de Bakabayandalaba. And you sit down in your bar. Shimbalaba. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let them be afraid. Let them be afraid. In the bus. <laughs> are you ashamed? I said, are you ashamed? Don't be ashamed of the gospel. These signs shall follow. Look at the way they... I remember when I, when I first went to the university, that was one of the things that struck me. You see the boy and girl holding... So, I, I look and I say... Ah. So I said, it seems they are not ashamed. Why should I be ashamed? So I began to speak loudly in tongues. Because I found the place. You see, when people are growing wild in the world, you must start to grow wild as a believer. So I decided to go wild. And I said, Mikata <laughs> Sayabala. When I entered the hall, and where people were fooling around, I would enter. When I enter, I will stand there and I say, and I will walk through the hall like that. Mikatando Satalababa Bikato Sataya. I remember when I was going for an interview to whether I was going to be taken into the medical school as a medical student. When I got there, all the students are people that come from all over the country they were coming for an interview. And there they were. God, and I didn't know. And there were only two of us coming from my school. And so I, I got there. Everybody was really glad because they really valued their medical profession. They had come very early for the interview. But I was a bit late, but they hadn't yet started. So when I got to the great hall, all the students were sitting there. And when I entered, they all looked. I said, I'm tall, I'm fair. When I entered, they looked at me and they look, I looked around. I saw them all. Everybody was looking at me. So I said, Sayabalaba <laughs> Shadala. <laughs> Give the Lord a shout! 
I wanted them to know I was a believer. Straight away. Straight away. They won. When they saw me, they said, the guy is some radical guy and he doesn't like certain things. He doesn't enjoy certain things. <laughs> Mando Sakata Babaya. And you see, my wife, now, that time she was my beloved, she also came to first year at the same time. And she was very cool about her Christianity and whether she was really a strong Christian or not, we were not sure. <laughs> so nobody really knew whether she was a Christian. So one day I, I was going on my usual rounds, visiting and moving around, and, and I came to her room. And I saw in her pigeonhole <laughs> invitation cards. People had invited her. I look at this invitation to a party jam, invitation to a, a disco, invitation to this, invitation to this. I said, Ah, what are these? I said, Me, since I came to this university, nobody has ever invited me for even one party. <laughs> <laughs> Because they know my stand. That's how I met Reverend Saki. I didn't know Reverend, Reverend Saki was from another place. My associate, Reverend Saki, he was from another uh, place altogether. Never saw him in my life before. But I was walking on the road and I was just moving on this side of the road. Two cars going this way, two cars coming this way. He was on the other side and I was on this side. And I was driving back. And I was going on the road. I said, Kashapatalobo Shakiba. Everybody saw that. This mad guy said, Yeah, Kabo Shakataba, Bitola de Pasata, Bebobo. And he saw me and said, ah, Which guy is this who is saying, I like this type of person. I like this kind of person. You will attract the right kind of people to your life. Hallelujah. Are you ashamed? Tell somebody, We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. No. We are not ashamed of the gospel. You see them homosexual just holding them up. <laughs> what is wrong with you? And then and then you are ashamed of, of sitting in a restaurant and saying, Father, I thank you for this uh, McDonald's. Oh Lord, at this time that we are in this restaurant, Lord, uh, we are grateful for an opportunity like this. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, Father. In Jesus' name. And everyone shouted, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are you ashamed? <laughs> don't be ashamed from today. Tell somebody, don't be ashamed from today. These signs shall follow you. Let the people know that you are a believer. Let them know that you are a believer from day one. Don't let them invite. Don't let them try to make you a boyfriend. Don't let them try to make you a girlfriend. Don't let them try to sleep with you. Don't let them try anything with you. Let them know that you are some way from day one. You are some way. You, you don't enjoy such things. You don't appreciate such things. <laughs> I remember I, 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 was, I used to be in a room. Give me some volume. You are cutting me. Uh, you are trying to lower the volume. Okay, all right, no problem. I remember I used to be in a room. My room number was K30. And there was a certain man in the next room, K31. And that guy, I tell you, I don't know, he was from another country. I don't want to say the country. He was from another country. And he had a small tape recorder. And he liked fornication too much. He was always sleeping with different girls. Different girls. And his best music was sexual healing. That was his best music. <laughs> so he would put on the thing, la sexual that's so that song anytime I hear I just I say, ah this thing is coming back. <laughs> sexual healing, sexual healing and the thing that we play sexual very loud for for him, for all about all of us on the road and for those on the other side, la sexual healing. So one day I said, every arrow that Satan has thrown, I'm going to return a spear. <laughs> so I decided now I'm also going to shout in tongues. So I also opened my door, my windows, and I started. 
Mikatosa tabele babo shandala maka. Mikam babanda metorolo bo shaka. Now I wasn't doing it like the prayer. I was, you, you see, thanks. You can pray with comma and full stop. And it, so, I was praying with comma and full stop. Mikata dolo mo shandala ba. Ma patia dolo mo kayaba. Mikata ta da mombro simba limbra. Mimbri mambo shumbri kame. Omunda la mama sandialo bobo kopa. Me brino lo bo I was pray loud. I just and I was just I just opened my door and I was just doing various things. Then the sexual healing man came out of the room. <laughs> and he came to ask my roommate, what is he saying? <laughs> and he told him he's praying in tongues. He's praying in time. So I called the guy. I said, do you want to give your life to God? You must be born again. He brought him inside the room. And we prayed for him. And we led him to give his life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But, the sexual healing, it didn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not ashamed. Amen. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. We are going to stand up for Jesus Christ. Don't mind being odd. Don't mind being odd. You will have power when you speak. Power when you open your mouth. Power. Attraction. People will come to your church. People will be interested in what you are saying. They will be converted. They will be transformed. They will be changed. There will be an aura around you. That aura, invisible, nobody can explain. Why is it that when he preaches, we feel the power? Why is it that when he preaches, we change? Why is it that when he preaches, we feel like doing it? Why is it that we feel like even dying? You know, we feel like giving up everything. It's the power that is at work. It's an invisible power. It comes from going into the ground and dying there alone. Set the seed fall into the ground, disintegrate in the darkness, become not. That times I pray, I weep, I become nothing. Nothing. When I was praying, I was feeling so sorry for myself. I don't want to tell you what happened, but something spiritual happened. I was very frightened in the room. I tell you, I've never talked about it. Amen. But I tell you, when you are in that place and you are breaking yourself down, you are being broken and praying and Pray and pray and you are dead. Cut off and pray and pray and pray. Oh, oh, oh. There will be some anointing about There will be some presence about you. Something that affects people. Something that works. I said something that works. Not much explanation, but it's working. Hallelujah. Tell somebody the cross is powerful. Amen. Amen.